praise and glory, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise and glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man had been, who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham replied, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah and the, the psalm that we heard, Psalm 1, there's that beautiful image of those who stand in the truth, those who follow the law of the Lord and live according to his teachings are like a tree living near brooks or streams with roots that are sunk deep. And those that don't, are like bushes out in the desert, in the salty wasteland, it says, that have no sustenance whatsoever, no strength. At this point in Lent, we're called to focus on what are we attached to in our lives that are not, that is not of God? What is it that we focus on? What has our heart? At the beginning of Lent, we were asked to rend our hearts, to open them up and really examine them. Jeremiah in this reading asks us to do the exact same thing. He said, the Lord wants our hearts. He tests the mind and searches the heart and to give all according to their ways. That can be frightening, that we will receive according to our ways, according to the fruit of our doings. So what is the fruit of our actions? What is the fruit of our speech? What is the fruit of our thoughts in our lives? Is it of the world or is it 
of God. And then we will be rewarded accordingly. The gospel gives us an example of two people who lived in these two ways. One of the world, the man who wore purple and fine linen and was very wealthy and focused there and ended up in hell. And then Lazarus, who ended up in the bosom of Abraham. It's a beautiful image. It's like God wrapping his arms around Lazarus. Not solely because he was poor, but because he trusted in God. That he had total confidence in God, even though he suffered in this life. And the other put all his confidence in the things of this world and therefore ended up in hell. It's a strong teaching at this point in Lent that we need to examine our hearts. We need to look at them very closely. Is there anything of this world that still grabs us? That we have confidence in, we trust in more than we trust in the Lord. And that's what Lent is all about. Looking at that, admitting it, if there, is, if there are things there, and then repenting of it. A repentant heart, one that stands in the truth, recognizes that God is the one we need to follow, and being sorrowful for that. Blessed are those who mourn. It means blessed are those who are saddened by their faults and actually take action and repent of it. The Lord wants our hearts. Let us pray. Father, help us to follow you absolutely, to trust you and have confidence in you absolutely, not just in our minds, but in our hearts and in everything that we think, say, and do. Help us to follow you more closely. For this grace we pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to see ourselves as you see us, to stand in the truth. And if there is anything not of you, to sincerely repent of it. For this grace we pray to the Lord. For each one of you, for the intentions which you bring to this Eucharist and that you offer now in the secret of your heart. For each of you and for your intentions, we pray to the Lord. For this special intention for which this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. On this feast day of St. Patrick, we pray for all those of in you know, all the uh, Irish in Ireland and for all those of Irish descent. We also pray for a restoration of the faith in Ireland as well. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for Ukraine and for peace there and an end to the violence and war there. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all of our sick, all those who have asked for our prayers, all those for whom we promise to pray. That the Lord heal them in all the ways they need to be healed. We pray to the Lord. And for the faithful departed, we pray especially for all the deceased members of each of your families, all the deceased members of our parishes, and all the deceased religious sisters, religious brothers, and clergy who have served this diocese. That the Lord grant all the faithful departed eternal rest and give his peace and comfort to all who mourn. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring each of these intentions before you. Those that have been mentioned aloud and those that each of us carry and offer in the sanctuary of our hearts. We ask you to hear and to answer them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.